Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different, and we're going to take a look at board game bags. Uh, now, transporting games can be a bit of an issue depending on where you're going and how many games you're bringing. Uh, so that's why I wanted to take a look at these. Um, I actually saw them at Gen Con this year, uh, and this is by Inic Gear, and this one is by Pirate Lab. So I had the opportunity to try out both, and I want to share my opinion, and hopefully give you a better idea of uh, which one you would like if you've been shopping around and want to get something. So let's begin. So this is the first bag by Pirate Lab. Uh, you've got straps here, so if you want to hold it with your hand, or if you want to place it over your shoulder, you've got this, and the straps are adjustable in the side. So I'm going to open it up, and you can take a look inside. And what you'll see is that it's actually very big. Uh, there's a lot of space. And it comes with these uh, removable walls, so that you can readjust them depending on the sizes of your games and where everything falls into place. So there are two of these, and I think the most important thing is to find out how many games that it can store. So we're going to start loading things in and we'll take a look when it's finished. So as you can see, the bag fits about five big box games. I've also put up a divider here so that the games aren't going to be rubbing against each other. Now that being said, if I was going to be carrying this out, I'd probably take out a game or two just because it's actually really heavy right now. Um, another nice feature is that the bag is water resistant, so if you're carrying it and you're transporting it you know, from your car and there's just some rain or a light drizzle, it's really not going to be too much of a problem. So this is what I've got to show about the Pirate Lab bag. Uh, now let's take a look at the Init Gear bag. So this is the Init Gear bag and it's got straps so that you can hold the bag here and here in the front. But what you'll notice is that they're actually uh, sewn in here and they run into the bottom of the bag here. So that gives it an extra level of sturdiness and hopefully it won't break as easily. Um, at the back here, he's also got a little tag spot to slip a card in in case you lose it. And it's got uh, zippers on the side, and this will allow you to hold additional items. And you've got little, you know, little compartments here as well for additional uh, non-board game box storage. So it also has on this side as well, as you can see here. Now what you'll notice is that the Init Gear bag is definitely smaller than the Pirate Lab bag. So what we'll do is we're just going to load it up with board games as well, just to see how many games it can fit. So this bag is definitely smaller than the Pirate Lab bag. Uh, we weren't able to fit Massive Darkness into it. Um, when I originally put Massive Darkness in, I wouldn't be able to fit Vast on the side like it is right now. Uh, however, this bag does have side pockets so that you can store additional items, maybe some smaller games or other accessories that you might need. And just like the Pirate Lab bag, this bag is also water resistant. Now, the Init Gear bag also had one feature that the Pirate Lab did not, though. And it is these game folios. So these game folios are another way that you can bring and store your games. So the way it works is that it's pretty much just like a binder. But you can open it up and you will see that there's a whole bunch of storage compartments for you to store your bits and other pieces so that you can bring multiple games in just this tiny little folder. So there's a whole bunch of little bags and there's a bunch of compartments so we're actually going to go fill this up and see what we can fit in here as well.
So I was able to fit both Vast and Sagrada into the game folio. And just for reference, uh, here are the sizes of both boxes. So then I can just put this on top and it'll fit nicely into the bag. Um, another thing to note is that you can store multiple of these in the bag. I think it's roughly about four to five, depending on how much you fill it up. And they could be stored either vertically like this, or you can store them horizontally and they'll stack just as neatly. Um, one thing I did notice though is that because this is a universal storage system, you're gonna have to play with a lot of things in order to make room for other things to fit or to make sure that uh, you can get the bag to close, which isn't too big of an issue. Um, for me, I'm a little bit worried about some of the cards that are stored in here, if we're gonna put pressure on them, if they're gonna you know, get a little bit more scuffed up than normal or a bit more wear and just other things are going to be rubbing around. Um, that's going to be a slight issue if uh, that stuff bothers you. Um, other than that though, if you don't really mind and your uh, biggest concern is fitting the greatest number of games into a bag, then this is definitely a pretty neat solution. Uh, these also store about, I believe it was two to three games is what was advertised. Um, I started off with Vast and I was going to put Evolution in, but I didn't really want to put too many cards into here because of what I just mentioned about them getting worn out. So I swapped into a different game just to see if it would fit. And, um, overall I'm pretty happy with the fit. Um, personally, I might try to use this for games that have less cards just so that I don't really have to worry about what happens to them as all the other pieces are definitely more durable. So that was a brief overview of the bags, the features, and the number of games that they can hold. Um, there are a few other things worth mentioning to help you make your decision. Um, this is a bag I'll want to bring with me when I go to a convention. It's big, and all the space is maximized for storing as much as I can carry. Uh, this bag, however, is more suited for smaller events, if I'm going to a friend's house, or uh, when I need to bring less games. And the benefit of this bag is that it's got side pockets, and this will allow me to bring other things like snacks, uh, you know, my phone charger, or other accessories that I would like to bring, but I can't. Uh, this bag doesn't really need it because when I go to those bigger events, I'm wearing my backpack all the time anyways, so I can just put all of the stuff in there. Um, the final thing to go over is actually the price of both of the bags. So the prices of the two bags are in USD. And the Pirate Lab bag is 40, the Init Gear bag is 80, and the Game Folio is 30. So this bag is basically double the price of this one. Uh, that being said though, the quality of the Init Gear bag is definitely better than Pirate Lab. And that's not to undermine the quality here at all. Uh, it's great. It's just I want to illustrate why this bag may be a little bit more expensive. Um, in terms of which bag you should get, uh, cost is definitely something you'll need to consider um, for your own budget. Uh, the other thing is how you're going to use your bags. So if you're going to the bigger conventions and you're just trying to bring as many games as you can, this might be the better approach for you. If you attend some smaller events and you don't really need the space, you may want to go this route, uh, just keeping in mind the price. Um, regardless, I think both bags are great. Um, I will continue to use both. And I'll definitely be experimenting with the game folio system a little bit more just to see what games fit well and if I can squeeze a little bit more games and maybe get to three to four games instead. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. And thanks for watching the video and I hope this helps you make a decision when you're board game bag shopping. Thanks and have a great day.